Today, I'm going to show you how easy it is to take a model from tabletop standard to that next level. Yo, dog, Kenny Boucher here, next level painting, hitting you up on the literal best of all days. Here in the Beats Lab in Hollywood, California, we're doing it again. Today, we're painting the Fright Mare from Privateer Press. That is from the new Grimkin line. This is a terrifying play on words. It is definitely a lady horse and she's frightening. What it comes down to guys is it's really easy to get your models to the tabletop, to get that tournament standard, to get that three color minimum. We're gonna show that in this video, but we're also gonna take it to the next level. In 2017, there's no excuses. With all the techniques, all the products out there and all the information, it's actually quick and easy, secretly easy, uh, secrets revealed, cheat codes, all of the catchphrases. Hey guys, I'm going to be posting all the paints we're going to be using in this video in the description box below. All these P3 OGs, the new Grimkins, and of course, the Army Painter Washes. I'm going to take this second to shout out a couple people over my Patreon page. Couldn't do it without you guys. Stevie Boy, Sean, Wes, Wine, Robert, Zachary, Cody, George, Tommaso, Alexander, Gabriel, Tyler, Bianca, Israel. Thank you guys. Can't do this without you. Patreon is my personal crowdfunding page. The Long War is coming to Southern California in January in partnership with SoCal Games and Comics. Stay tuned. Let's do this thing, guys. We got the Frightmare up on deck. Privateer Press Grimkin Hordes. All right. Bootstrap leather. Bloodstone brown i don't know if it's a brown or red but i like it we're gonna kind of start here with the bloodstone build up a quick base over a gray primer on this disgusting ridiculous lady horse throwing up a person throwing up a person disgusting <laughs> i also like the nightmare the name especially since it's a horse i got a good chuckle out of that so obviously what we're trying to do here is some thin coats build it up 100% cover the gray primer. Get a good base coat established so we can start building up some basic airbrush combos using our airbrush. The only trick here is that since it's gray, it's going to take a couple of passes so you can seal up all that gray. Black might have been the trick here, but I uh, wasn't thinking when I did it. All right. Feeling pretty good about this. Now we're using a little bit of that bootstrap brown. And we're just blending it right off of some of the points, some of the high stuff. This might not even matter once we're done with the washes, but I like to build my colors up like this. So now we're highlighting the top of the snout here or the nose, whatever. I'm not a horse scientist. Just building some fun transitions. This is more therapeutic than anything. I really don't care about light. I'm just building up a nice bright color over a really interesting base color. This will be the next level painting system. We are going to be using washes and gloss and varnishes and all that secret tech that's no longer a secret. Holding it down, trying to get the angles, but you know, don't overthink it, guys. I'll let you know when it's time to overthink it. Feeling pretty good about the nightmare. Like this color combo. These P3 formula paints, they're so airbrushable. They thin down so well. You get great transitions with very low speckle. All right, he's looking his best. Feeling it. A little bit more bootstrap brown through the airbrush, kind of a second pass here. Building that highlight up, making it as bright as possible. Before we go into the points of the horse, we are sort of looking at a picture of a Mustang, but not, but you know, we're not like literally married to it. We're just trying to take a look at what some horses look like. The more interesting horses that have maybe darker spots near their hooves and their snouts. So obviously we're gonna switch gears, gonna hit that Thalmar Black Privateer Press, solid color right here. We're gonna get it thinned down, a little bit thinner than normal. And we're gonna start like just lightly building it up from the hooves. So take a few passes, we're keeping it real thin on purpose so we get a real good blend, almost a glaze. We're gonna let it dry, keep building it up. We're using a lot of air, only a little bit of paint. That helps it dry even faster. And this is gonna really help us sell it that it's a horse. 
looked at a lot of pictures of horses and this is the, the pattern I decided to go with. We're even gonna do some interesting patterns on the top of his ridiculous horse head. All right, slowing it down. Gonna start aiming at his face. There we go, this is kind of what's gonna sell it. These types of horses have like a, you know, the same burning black pattern around their snout and their, and their lips. Some of them are, it's more pronounced than others. We're gonna take creative liberties here to make sure it's very well established. Gives us something interesting to look at. And of course, we're gonna cut in those heads against that black. It's gonna have a really solid contrast. It's gonna look like a horse. Nightmare on deck, or she's gonna look like a horse. All right, round two. Let's get that black fully established, make it look its absolute best. Now that it's dried up a little bit, you don't wanna just keep running airbrush paint that's this thin until you get some dry time between some steps. Mm. Nightmare coming together. Epic transitions. While that's all drying, we're gonna take that Thalmar black that we already laid out in the airbrush and we're just gonna cut in these nails. Cause this nightmare has got some serious claws instead of hooves for hands. Fucking terrifying. <laughs> I don't even I don't even know what they were thinking over at Privateer Press. This is just a horror movie. Right, Cheryl. Alright. Let's get the other claw, rapid fire, and we're just using the paint that was in the paintbrush pot in the airbrush. So it's got a lot of flow improver in it, so this might take a while to dry. But that's fine, we're staying busy in the Beats Lab while one thing's drying, we can always move on to the next. Too easy. All right, let's switch gears for one second. Midland Flesh, this is a Grimkin color right here from the new line. We're gonna just do a quick couple of thin base coats on the faces. The Nightmare is throwing up a dude who's throwing up a dude. Now, I don't know if they're all dudes. Maybe one's a ghost. I don't know what's going on. Different stages of digestion. Maybe it's just horrifying. Maybe there's no narrative behind it. I don't, I'm not sure. But we're just going to paint them both for now. Placeholder, a couple thin coats. All right, Sickly Skin, another Grimkin exclusive. This is a solid color. I use this all the time. We're going to use this in conjunction with the bootstrap leather, bootstrap brown. And we're going to make a base coat and hit all the wraps, all the nightmares, wraps, bandages that she's covering herself with. We're going to paint them all up real quick with a quick base coat. And then we'll come back in and we'll highlight them. But it's a little bright of a color. It's a little aggressive to just come straight to the sickly skin over this brown. It'll take more of the coats than you're comfortable with. And you would have to blend some in anyway. So I find it much easier to base coat with something like this where you take a little bit of the color and mix it in with a darker base color. We're also going to use the same exact color combo for the mane. Too easy. We'll come back to that mane later and give it something a little bit special so it's not exactly the same color as the wraps. All right, and even the face getting thrown up by the face is going to be this color so that there's a definitely a difference between the two so we can create a little bit of contrast there. So sickly skin for the little dude getting thrown up by the medium dude getting thrown up by the nightmare. Sanguine highlight, solid color right here. This is another P3 color. We're gonna use this just to quickly glaze in a little bit of skin irritation where the claws are busting out of where it once was hooves. I don't know what's going on here, but this seems right to me. Just a real thin coat, real watered down paint, almost like a wash or a glaze. Let it dry. If you feel like you need another coat, do another coat. It's not science. Same thing. We're going to just cut a little bit in here on the dude. Uh, throw up dude one. Throw a little bit of this sanguine highlight in there. Grab a little bit of Midland Flesh. Blend it back in so there's some nice, interesting skin tones popping off right there. Real easy. We'll come back and do even more. But I'm just trying to establish a good, solid base. Pre-wash. There we go. Pink up the flesh just a little bit all place holding. All right, here we go. We're going to paint that horsey pattern. There's a little bit of that bootstrap leather, with a little bit of sickly skin mixed in, real thin, like a glaze. We're going to do, we let it dry and then we added more water and now we're creating like the fuzzy outer barrier. See, we're being real liberal here. So this more thin glazed out section will give us a little bit of a fuzz. And now we're going to start narrowing the focus, less water, more sickly skin. 
a little bit of a jagged center line. Boom. There it is. Okay, one last glaze or fuzz pattern. We're just dappling it on, giving it the look of fur rather than a blurred line, more of a jagged line. All right, gloss varnish time. This is typically where the video almost ends, guys. We're gonna throw a little bit of gloss varnish on Vallejo, get it real good and shiny, let it dry. Make sure to get it good, good and shiny, but not white or milky white like it looks in the pot. The Vallejo varnish dries pretty quick. So after a solid, you know, 30, 40 minutes, you're ready to go with the wash stage, and that is the next level painting system. Always come back to that wash game. But we actually have an action-packed video here today. We're gonna go all the way. Dark tone, which is basically black wash from the Army Painter. A little bit of mild brown. This is one of my favorite go-to combos. And we're gonna take this combination and just wash the entire body of the Nightmare. A little bit more dark tone than mild brown in the mix. Help us really lock in those contrasts, those muscle fibers. And if you haven't watched one of my videos before, the whole reason we use gloss varnish, it breaks up the surface tension and lets that wash really flow into the cracks, dispersing it from all the raised surfaces, forcing it into the crevices, eliminate coffee staining, really does amazing stuff here. The Army Painter can't say enough good thing about them in conjunction with these P3 formula paints. Some of my favorite paints in the game. Too easy. Make sure to use a nice soft bristle brush, move them around. Manipulate the wash. Don't be too aggressive. Use relatively light brush pressure here. Let the wash build up and then start wicking it away from any areas that you think it's forming a, an ocean of wash. But you see how much contrast it's creating, how much detail it's bringing out in the model. A lot of people have been asking, like, what about uh, if you can use matte varnish for this same effect? No, not really. You got to use gloss. Then some people have been worried lately about, well, I don't want my model to be shiny. It won't be. I mean, just the wash is going to mat it back down, but then you can always just apply a matte varnish afterwards and bring it right back. My favorite thing, honestly, about using gloss varnish to do this process is it also locks in the airbrush. The, that the, all those subtle transitions and light coats we just did, it literally is the hardest, most gangster way to protect your model's gloss varnish. So even if you just did a gloss varnish at the end and then let it dry and then did a matte varnish over top, yo, that model is hard pressed to take a chip. All right, it's looking his best. Now you notice we have been avoiding the, the throw up brothers, the puke brothers in his mouth, because we don't want to use this black and brown combo. We want to use a flesh wash predominant combo here. So once we get the face of the horse done and everything, we are going to be ready to introduce a little flesh wash. Here it is, flesh wash. And I'm not afraid to use this flesh wash and pull a little bit of the black brown into it to darken it. But this is like 95% flesh wash. There we go. And it does real good work over these skin tones. Look how much detail just got popped out. This model right now is ready for the tabletop. This is what I call, you know, tabletop minimum, right? Three color minimum, tabletop standard. We did some nice clean transitions, solid execution of washes, and we have a clean model ready to game with. Look at that. But we are going to take it a step further in this video. Nightmare's looking her best. Pimp chilling on that base. Um, I have a quick solution for that slotted base. We are going to keep her on this base. I don't have any resin transfers that fit the Privateer press line. So we're going to grab some Vallejo Dark Earth. One of the most affordable pumices in the game. We're going to just build it up over that slot with a gangster paintbrush that I have that's just beat up for this kind of stuff. We're gonna build it up very slowly with a light touch until we basically span that gap with pumice and then we're just gonna start building it up on the base. We're just staying busy in the beat slab right now while all that wash is drying. We're trying to, you know, just do some other task. Be as efficient as possible. All right, you know, as you get that gap filled in, you can Change brushes, change approaches, so you don't get the pumice all over the feet. Just be careful, feather it in, get a good build up, and then you know add a second pass if you want more ripples. But there we go, solid texture right there. Okay, now it's time to highlight this model. 
We're going to start off with the rib cage. We're using the previous highlight colors like bootstrap leather and sickly skin. And we're just going to basically trace the raised surfaces. It's pretty easy. Everywhere the wash settled is not where you're highlighting. Everywhere that the gloss varnish helped it wick away and stayed raised and brighter is where we're going to highlight. So step one is a real light, clean couple of lines in that bootstrap brown spectrum. We're going to build it up brighter and brighter progressively, adding more and more definition and excitement to these highlights. And we're just tracing any detail that the wash revealed to us. See that? We're not really thinking about lighting or anything. We're just tracing. Real simple. This is a real easy way to bring a lot of definition, breathe a lot of life into your model. He's got lots of great details in his neck, her neck, lots of fun stuff, veins, wrinkles, folds of skin, muscle fibers. The nightmare's got plenty going on. She does what she do. All right, same thing, the belly right here, that's one of my favorite techniques. Hit that highlight right up against that dark edge from the wash, gives you some fun, interesting angles. So always hit that bicep line, always hit the deltoid line, hit the tricep uh, separation. This is all real simple stuff. It's painting by numbers because, like I said, the wash laid out the map for our highlighting. On the quadricep, we're going to trace down to the knee, manufacture another fun little highlight right here. Boom. Look at that. Anywhere raised. Just drop a quick little line. Keep it kind of thin so that way it's not so abrupt. And as you get tinier and more bright with the highlights, use less and less water. Be more aggressive. Here we go. We're going to start using a little bit sickly skin that we used earlier. Just cut in some details. Now, the cool thing here is you can, you can go back and forth. We just reintroduced a little bootstrap leather to it because that was a little aggressive. And so I'm going to just soften it a little bit with bootstrap brown. You can see on my thumb palette. We were like, okay, too real. And we're just gonna reinforce all those highlights with this slightly brighter color. Less water, more control, hopefully. More razor edges. Use a good detail brush for this. She's got plenty of fun details, but what you wanna be careful here is not to undo the entire previous highlight, but to augment it, to add to it. Find a point where it would be better served if it was a little brighter right there. Boom. Look at that, just making these cool little lines. Tracing it all out, paint by numbers. Getting some good looks here. Same deal, she's got some interesting stuff back here behind her boils. We're just tracing them out, real light strokes. Real light brush pressure. That's really important when you're doing stuff like this. Really focus on that, it goes a long way. Top of the ear, to the eyebrow connection. Literally every highlight, we're gonna do it over again. The rib cage. The stomach, just add a little bit there to the center. Quads, biceps, you know, literally everything, man. So we gotta hit the, you gotta hit that deltoid, the the striations and the deltoids. Hit that nice bicep vein right there. Mm. Looking her best, she works out. All right, here I didn't like the way the wash pulled, so I grabbed a little bit of that bootstrap brown again, just thinned it down, glazed it in, covered up that wash, and just blended it back into that highlight. We did get a little bit of the ocean of wash down there. All right, okay, now we're gonna grab that sickly skin again and we're just gonna pop these highlights out. Absolutely reinforce them, take them to that next level. We're gonna get that nice contrast, that iconic clean edge highlighting. This is what I like to do, it's what I live for in a miniature world. Boom. Real smooth, you see that? We're not undoing all that highlighting, we're just adding this a thinner, more razor edge to it. Trying to keep some of it intact, help it progress to this pinnacle highlight. Nightmare is looking scary. Same thing, tighten the highlight up on the bicep muscle. Boom, good separation, look at that. You can really see that. Striations in the deltoids, really taking it to that next level. Let's get the quadriceps, same deal. Don't just retrace everything, just a little bit down here. Leave some of those intact. There we go. Quick little, quick little highlight. Feeling pretty good about all this. A couple more, we're just doing a final spot check. Using a little bootstrap brown, smooth some of these highlights out. 
you can come back in with the mid-tone with a little bit of water in it and, and clean up any of your highlights. All right, she's got a weird hip poking out through the bandages. We just do a little bit of bootstrap bound on that. Now we're gonna jump right, all, right up into her bandages. Now we're gonna grab pure sickly skin and we're gonna start highlighting it up. And that's what I was talking about. Now we're gonna take it to pure sickly skin and this is how we're gonna get our highlight. It's been washed, the detail has been revealed to us and now we get to just trace the folds of the cloth that the wash left relatively bright and we're gonna create a magnificently well transitioned bright clean look but it's also gonna stay dirty and well defined hit them all doesn't take too long we filmed this entire video today just doing all these highlights boom see a couple of quick lines and this is definitely the next level painting system this is what I do on every model practically feeling good about that bandages looking nasty we're definitely have to come back to that hair and do something to give it a different look but I like it on the same spectrum we're gonna hit these bandages on the wrist just trace you see how easy that is it's not science I'm telling you guys painting miniatures secretly easy if you know the right technique almost no skill needed trace a couple lines right here I think this is her her halter top is, is that a is that a joke sanguine highlight again and I just want to reiterate how much I like this color we're gonna use this to start building up highlights in the eye and the boils first coat little thin little glazy to start building up that sanguine highlight get those boils this is a totally good color. It's very contrasty. It has nothing to do with the brown. It's got a nice pink purpley tone to it that is really highlightable. We're gonna sneak a little bit into the irritated skin where the claws are bursting out of where once were hooves. We're really gonna sell that irritated uh, new growth look. Now, like this, she just grew these claws today. All right, we're gonna start adding our highlight colors. A little bit of sickly skin. And we're progressively going to just highlight it up exactly like we did the rest of the skin with the brown tones. We're using sickly skin to do for, as a highlight color for both. Common link there. Highlight these boils up. Make them look their nastiest. All day every day. Mm. All right. A little bit more. Let's get a nice little dot in there. Give us a, a nice little bling. Make that eye look really bright and terrifying with some nice sanguine highlight transitions in there make it bright give it some good borders and just drop little dots off on these boils like they're about to rupture keep it gross let's do it scary time of the year all right we're going to take this final highlight do the same thing drag it across the paw here the bear the bear claw sell that final look all right time to highlight the skin here we're going to grab that Midland Flesh with a little sickly skin. You see the theme? And we're going to thin it down, kind of make a glaze. And we're going to lightly start framing out these raised surfaces. You can see the wash told the story. This is what I'm talking about. And you can kind of take some creative liberties to augment it, reinforce some of the areas, build it up slowly like we've done over the course of the entire model. Give ourselves a real natural skin tone here. Just trace it out. Throw up brothers in, in the house. Boom. Getting that nose, lips, nostril. We're just progressively adding a little bit more sickly skin to it. Less Midland flesh. Just takes a little bit of patience, a little bit of know-how. I said this is just a technique. The wash, the wash does it all. Love it. All right, we're gonna take some of that sickly skin since we're at the sickly skin spectrum. Highlight the throw up brother number two. Drop a little bit of highlights off on his ears and his nose and his cheeks, his brow ridge, everything. I feel like he's been digested for longer so he's got a more sickly skin tone. Dude is gross. <laughs> I definitely plan on taking some technical effects into these guys, maybe some slime, some bile, I don't know yet. 
definitely take it to that level live on Twitch. All right, we're gonna take a little bit of that wash that we used earlier, wash the eye, give it a nice frame, a little bit of eyeliner so you can see the eye better for later highlighting. Take some more of this, throw it into Throw Up Brother 2's hair to help redefine the hair. There we go. Just help with that. Too easy. You wanna make sure there's as much contrast as possible while staying somewhat true to these colors. All right, Nightmare on deck. One or two final highlights here. Introducing a little bit of that sanguine base, sanguine highlight back into the skin right up against the mare's mouth. Just like we did earlier. We're just reinforcing it, kind of bringing some of that natural pink tones to the skin. Really helps it look extra gross for some reason. I don't know why, but it just, just does. All right, one of my favorite colors from the new Grimkin line, Grave Digger Denim. We're gonna quickly mix this up, mix it in a little bit with the black, and we're just gonna rapid fire trace out some highlights on the claws. Look at that, already looks interesting. But we're not gonna stop there. We're gonna go back to Sickly Skin, add a little bit into our Grave Digger Denim, and we're gonna drag, drag some razor highlights in. It's a back and forth process. Sneak the highlight in. If you get too aggressive, Go back to the gray that you just built with Gravedigger denim, denim and black. Glaze it out. You know, just repair it if you need to. If you work this thin with your paints, you will always have an opportunity to fix mistakes. See, I just fuzzed it out a little bit. Now I'm going to redefine these snickety snickities just a little bit more. Grab the smaller detail brush. Pow. Make them look gross. Make them look shiny. But something about these claws... Super weird. <laughs> Look at that shit. Fucking October is upon us. Perfect model. All right, quick little dry brush. Using our gangster dry brush with a little bit of sickly skin in it. All right, now we're going to grab Mediocre and Bogram Brown from the Grimkin line. And we're going to mix up kind of a yellow stain here. Add a lot of water to it, make it a glaze. And we're going to kind of glaze this yellow into the mane to really just yellow it out just to just make you know age it make it look gross maybe sweat stained very cool very easy to do here once you get it on there and you feel like you've got enough stain then it's just real easy matter of going back to the sickly skin and just dropping a couple of extra highlights over the yellow we're gonna do that right here just find some of the bigger strands of hair make sure they're back to sickly skin kind of force that yellow into the background since we glazed it aggressively and this will also just sell the hair effect a little bit more a little bit more multi-dimensional pretty easy hair is usually pretty daunting for people but you'll realize hair with, with, with a little bit of wash a little bit of dry brushing any hair can be done pretty easily I mean we're fucking just painting the strands right now I mean, that's the gangster's way to do it. Too easy. Nightmare coming along pretty good. I think the highlights are on point. She is definitely a super scary horse demon that regurgitates multiple people at once. All right. We're coming up on some of the final finishing touches here, guys. We're going to take some more of that dark tone now that our base is dry and we're just going to wash the pumice and this is really going to sell it. You just completely wash the base with black. You're going to get a nice even gravel effect as the as the wash does what it do. You can come back and dry brush that if you want, but you don't have to. We're going to take a little bit of black and paint the rim of the base. I always like painting the rims of the base black. Super easy. Use a good brush. Make sure you have enough water in the paint. Get some nice smooth strokes, and there you go. So let's take a look at it. Let's just do a quick comparison, guys. That's our nightmare. This is our barely tabletop standard nightmare. And again, next level right here. That simple, guys. Thanks for watching. Play on, players.